All right, thanks very much. Welcome everyone. Boost your career with DevOps. I'm uh, I'm super excited about this. DevOps is one of those hot new buzzy buzzwords that gets me all ramped up. It's like cloud, you know. Everyone's like, "Hey, you got to know DevOps. You got to be in DevOps. DevOps is the new thing." And you know, you press them for a little bit of details about what they mean, and and they say, "Well, yeah, you know, whatever. It's DevOps. You know, just know some DevOps." It's uh, it's become a really hot topic recently. So I'm excited that we get to talk a little bit about it here. And of course, on that note, one of the first things that I want to do is I really want to address the question of what is DevOps, because I'm certain if you ask 100 different people, what is DevOps, you're going to get 100 different answers. It's a little bit different for everybody. So let's address it, at least for the purposes of this conversation, because I want to understand for all of us, get us on the same page when we're talking about DevOps and what we mean. And I'll start off with a little bit of a, an anecdote, I guess. Before I started working here at CBT Nuggets, I was working at a bank, a pretty large bank, been around a long time. Um, so an old, conservative, traditional financial organization. I was on the software side of the house. Uh, it was tough to get resources from infrastructure, from operations, to set up my, um, you know, set up the applications that I had to build and support. I remember we were rolling out one application. Uh, this was at the time when I was leaving, and we had spent about 18 months on this application. So really long involved project. And one of the things that made it long and involved was the fact that every time we needed a new server or we needed an update or a change to the server or the configuration, the group policy, that kind of thing, I had to fill out some paperwork, submit a ticket, a change request with the infrastructure guys. The infrastructure guys being nice guys and, and plenty competent, but you know also really busy and in a completely different building, 20 minutes away. And they had to respond to that, so you know it would take you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks just for them to get to this, and then it would come back and be like, oh, you didn't quite make exactly the change I needed. Here's actually what I meant, and it would take another two weeks to get that change in place. So it was just this real separated, siloed setups organization, and that's traditionally the way it's always worked. You got your, your software developers, your, your application engineers on one side of the house, and you got your operation folks on the other side, and they don't really mingle and mix. Uh, and DevOps attempts to address that with you know, pretty mixed, interesting results. Um, you can imagine on the developer side, we're all about the application. We're all focused on updating that application, getting the features out, getting the, the, the bugs squashed, you know, addressing the, the user's concerns, change, 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 go, go, go. We don't want to sit there and watch an application quietly hum along and run without any change to it. That's boring to us. We want to see it get updated. We want to create new things. On the flip side, the operations guys, they're all about stability and consistency. They don't want to see a bunch of change. They want to get that hardware up and running. They want to see it humming along peacefully, a bunch of green lights, no alerts coming up, no phone calls in the middle of the night because something went wrong. So on the operations side, you can sort of characterize it as, as being, you know, all about consistency and stability. So when you mix them together, well, you know what, sometimes it's a little bit like chocolate and peanut butter and they mix great and other times they clash. When you talk to the dev guys about what DevOps is, you hear a lot about things like Jenkins, Strider, Travis CI, continuous integration tools. These are the tools that allow a developer to write their code, push it up into some kind of repository or um, you know, source code control system, and see it roll through the process without any more hands-on involvement from them. So they push it up, and it automatically gets unit tested. And then the results of those unit tests are automatically you know, disseminated, emailed out to the stakeholders in the, uh, on the project. And then that, you know, once it passes those unit tests, it goes up into a test environment. And the folks who need to test it get automatic alerts that they have new updates or changes or fixes to get tested. And all these notes are written out to the, the ticket management system automatically for them. So continuous integration, the idea that you can write your code, push it up, and not worry about it. It brings this idea of process and stability from the ops side of the house into the developer side. But from the ops folks, when you talk to them about DevOps, they've got a different perspective. They're going to think about configuration management tools, things like Chef or Puppet or increasingly Ansible. And these are tools that bring the trappings of a developer to their job. Because increasingly what they do is software driven. Virtual machines and now containers are, you know, all the rage and really driving what's happening in infrastructure and platforms. It brings things like source control, unit testing, versioning, those kind of trappings, those kind of developer features over to the operations side of the house so that when they need to manage the configuration of a server, they're not remote desktoping into a server and changing it. They're modifying a script, they're updating the version, they're ensuring that that script still meets the, the organization's specifications, it's being tested, it's being rolled out, etc. All those things that developers typically do are now being applied to the operations side. So DevOps, 
I like to say is what happens when you integrate your entire delivery pipeline. It's breaking down those barriers between the different pieces of your organization so that they can work together and they can see that entire pipeline from coding all the way down to configuration and monitoring right inside of an integrated solution. We're talking about bringing people together. And to that end, DevOps is not a new skill. It's not a new department in your organization. DevOps is doing what you already do, but just doing it with more co coordination, more integration, uh, and ensuring that it, it adds value to the organization and it adds value to everybody's job. So everybody has an easier opportunity or a, a, you know, an, easier, an easier task in front of them, if you will. So with that kind of in mind, how does DevOps boost your career? Why is DevOps such a good idea? Let's talk a little bit about some of the numbers behind DevOps right now. Um, I've got these, uh, these different things here uh, sourced where I pulled up this information from. DevOps is increasingly important right now. You can see on the left-hand side here some of the measurable benefits that they had in this Rackspace survey from DevOps. And look at things like sales, customer engagement, employee engagement. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an important thing in, in improving the quality of what you deliver to your customers and to your organization, whether those are internal or external customers. Having a DevOps frame of mind and a DevOps focus on how you deliver is a big, big deal. I also really like this Encapsula survey over here where they talked about the most important technical skills for DevOps professionals. And you'll notice that configuration management tools, cloud deployment, systems architecture, those are the things that people believe that they need in order to be a good DevOps professional. It's not about being a better coder, and it's not about being you know, a better server administrator. It's about understanding how to configure and organize and deploy these things in a way that's, that's smooth and continuous and easy for your, uh, your users and your customers to understand. Now, okay, that stuff's all great. That's all about you know, internal, the organization, what's gonna help your customers. You're here about boosting your career with DevOps and how does DevOps help to boost our career? Well, the salary numbers are a little bit staggering. You can go ahead and hit Google and search for this stuff yourself. Um, at jobsignal.io, they had an average salary for a DevOps role exceeding $110,000. I mean, the numbers are just enormous, and they're constantly going up. There is a constant increase in demand right now for DevOps professionals or folks in the world of DevOps. This is to be expected. This is what we would expect to see. As agile methodologies have become a bigger and bigger part of an organization, Folks who are comfortable uh, implementing Agile, and implementing Agile in a way that's still consistent and testable and doesn't make life worse for everybody is going to be a big part of what makes you an important IT professional. On the flip side, when you come from a, an operations side, you need to be able to be more Agile as well. You need to, to start to recognize that stability and consistency is important in the delivery, is important in the exposure of what you do but not necessarily in the underlying infrastructure. You gotta expect to be able to roll out changes to your servers, roll out changes to your configuration to meet this agile demand, this agile development methodology. So it shouldn't be surprising at all to see that these skills, uh, you can see here over on the dice side of this screen, puppet, chef, cloud architecture, just the number of job postings for those shooting up from 2014 to 2015, and I'm sure that they will shoot up again in this year, 2016 because it's just such an important thing and it's such a way, it's, it, it's such an integral part of the way that companies, new companies and small agile companies are running themselves now, that there is a constant need and a constant desire to get this, uh, get this updated and upgraded by you know, every organization out there. So let's talk about ourselves. How do we boost our career with DevOps? And this is, I mentioned it briefly earlier, but I kind of want to highlight it again. DevOps is not a new job. And DevOps is not a new department in your organization. DevOps is not a new skill set that you need to learn. DevOps is a frame of mind. It's a, uh, I, I want to say a philosophy, but I know that sounds kind of fuzzy and, and hard to, to define, hard to lock down. But yeah, DevOps is a philosophy for how you do your job inside your organization. And when it comes to either in your existing job or if you're looking for a new job, if you're, you're applying to one of these jobs that says DevOps right there in the job description, how do you present yourself as a DevOps, a, a DevOps engineer? How do, you, how do you expose yourself as someone who is involved with and understands and works in a DevOps frame of mind? And 
first and foremost, what you need to do, of course, is training. Hey, let's be honest. We believe in training. You got to be up to date on your skills and whether that's chef and puppet or Ansible or Jenkins or whatever other tools that you need, you got to make sure that you are trained with the tools that the DevOps professionals are using today. And those are the things that they're using. Cloud is incredibly important in this. I, uh, well, I'm a little bit biased. I, I do some of the cloud training here at CBT Nuggets, but this is a big part of DevOps, using the cloud, leveraging the power of the cloud to turn your, your application development and deployment into a fast, agile deployment is really, really important. And you got to understand how the cloud fits into all of that. I've also highlighted right in the middle here critical thinking. And this probably goes for any, uh, any IT job or any IT professional position that you might be considering. But critical thinking is always a really key, important part of what we are able to do and how we present ourselves when we, you know, whether you're applying for a new job or trying to move up in your existing organization, you need to demonstrate that you can think about how these tools are used inside of your organization, how they fit, and, you know, equally important how they don't fit. Just because chef is all the rage doesn't mean that you necessarily need to use it where you are, that it's the right thing to use and to do where you are in your career and in your life and in that organization's life cycle. So this, this ability to understand these tools and how they work and how they fit together, critically thinking about when and how to apply them is really, really important. And if you're sitting in an interview, that's something that I would talk about. I would, I would absolutely bring up to an interviewer that, you know what, I have thought about this and this is something that I consider and I'm worried about. And then lastly there, I've got the little chameleon for adaptability. And this is another IT universal, but you have to be adaptable. DevOps is relatively new. Uh, it's going to change a lot. We all know that. The tools that are popular today may not be popular tomorrow. And you know what? DevOps is a lot of times all about managing change. It's all about being comfortable with change and how you can roll change out in an organization without disrupting the flow. So you need to be adaptable. You need to be changeable. You need to be ready to work with a lot of different technologies, a lot of different people, because you're integrating, you're breaking down those silos like I talked about. So you're working with a lot of different people. And lastly here, I have this quote that I love about DevOps uh, from Charles Darwin. It's not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. And that's what, at the end of the day, that's what you are really focused on when you want to boost your career with DevOps, when you want to learn the skills and the tools that are going to help you deploy DevOps in your career, being adaptable, being being ready for change and having critical critical thought and training yourself so that you're up to date on all the latest changes. These are the things that drive DevOps. I've got a link right in the middle of the page there for a really great white paper uh, that I read uh, just this morning, actually. It was a really cool, really cool paper on some different information. You can sign up and get a, a link to it there. I would highly recommend that. It's got some really great, neat, and uh, interesting information. So with that being said, are there any questions out there? You can type them into the chat box and they come up down here on our, our chat window. Is there anything specific that you guys want to know about DevOps or about how to boost your career with DevOps? All right, here's one from Pradeep. It's, my company is using Puppet right now. Can I go to my manager and ask them to change his chef? What are the possible arguments that I can make? Uh, well, that's a tough one. You know, Puppet... Puppet and Chef are largely, from my perspective, and I, I can hardly claim to be an, an expert in them. I wish Sean Powers were here to, uh, to answer that question. He's done the Chef and Puppet training here. But uh, to, to my knowledge, they're largely interchangeable. And, and, you know, my answer would be, why do you want to go to Chef? Do you feel that it's a better product? Do you feel that you're going to have more luck or more success recruiting individuals into the organization to work with Chef versus Puppet? Do you feel... The Chef is just a more mature product. Uh, any of those might be true, and there might be ways that you can you can go about that. Um, but you know, Puppet is a really popular and really increasingly popular uh, uh, configuration management tool. So I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure why you would want to make the argument to shift from Puppet to Chef. But um, certainly, you wouldn't lose anything by making that change. Uh, Shaikh Natik says, "Where to start from?" Well, that's a really great question. I think that depends on where you're coming from. Um, again, on the development side of the house, I think you want to look at something called continuous integration. Jenkins is a big one. 
That's uh, an open source tool by Google. So, you know, if you're coming from the development side, it's all about these build tools and these build automation tools. Gradle is another really big one if you work in Java. Um, Webpack, Browserify, a lot of the JavaScript tools. It's been a big deal in the JavaScript community for a while now. So look at continuous integration and, and build runners and those kinds of things from the development side. If you're on the ops side, you want to start with Chef or Puppy. You want to understand configuration management tools like Pradeep was just asking about how they compare, how they contrast, and how you can use them to streamline your organization or streamline your job requirements. Uh, Steve McAfee wants to know what DevOps certifications are available. Steve, very, very few. It's an incredibly new uh, incredibly new area. One place that there are some good certifications that I know of are in the cloud. AWS, Azure, and Google all have a lot of great certifications. And cloud deployment is a big part of DevOps, so I would look into cloud certifications. Particularly the AWS and the Azure ones, they're really, really popular right now, and they've got some, you know, they're pretty mature. They've been around a while, they're pretty mature. You have a lot of good answers there. Um, you're not going to find much in the way of some of these, these smaller, newer tools yet. So they're not there. Uh, if I were to guess, CompTIA might have something, or at least something coming down the pipeline, but I'm just not entirely certain. So there are. It's tough to find, uh, you know, DevOps-focused certifications. But again, I don't think of DevOps as being a separate skill set or a separate uh, job. It's just it's doing the job you've always done, but in a slightly different way. It's a, a different approach to the same tasks. So, you know, the certifications that help you do what you always were going to do are going to work for DevOps. Uh, what would be the best skill for storage and virtualization engineer to learn for DevOps? Um, well, I would, whew, that's a good question. And, you know, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to preface this a little bit with, with uh, virtualization and storage not being at the top of my personal skill list, Brandon. Um, I would look at, I would look in, you know, configuration management tools to begin with Chef and Puppet and Ansible and see what they offer. In the way of um, in the way of deployment for virtual machines and virtual storage, I would also look in Docker containerization and particularly Kubernetes from Google. Uh, Kubernetes is a container cluster management system, and I know that in the most recent version, they actually just rolled out the ability to create what they call a claim for storage for persistent storage, and you have these these virtualized storage uh, units that are spun up on demand for you for your containers, for your clusters, with, you know, very little, um, with really with no work on the underlying infrastructure for what supports them. You simply use these DevOps tools and this DevOps philosophy with Container Engine, GKE, or uh, sorry, Kubernetes to, um, to, you know, create your virtualization requests. It's really kind of neat, and I'm doing a bad job of explaining it here because I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for that question. But I think, I think you want to look at containers and cluster management systems, and you want to look at configuration management like Chef and Puppet. Uh, John wants to know, how do you measure your progress on your DevOps journey? Are there phases? Uh, yeah, you know, you could think of it in phases, and I, I believe that link I've got up on screen now, they actually talk about the phases of adoption uh, later in that document. Y you don't measure... I wouldn't consider DevOps to be a journey. I would consider, again, DevOps to be a state of how you're working. And your phases are going to be how integrated or how closely coupled with your other, the other teams and the other people in your organization are you. How smoothly do things, do updates, do changes roll through the pipeline of deployment? Where does stuff get held up? You know, where does, where does your three-week uh, three Agile Scrum cycle suddenly run into a wall where deployments aren't going out as quickly as you hoped. You know, that's how you're going to, breaking down those barriers and, and making those things, those jobs easier for everybody is how I think you're going to measure your DevOps journey. Um, because again, I, I don't see it as a journey. I see it as, as a, a frame of mind, a way of thinking about your job and thinking about what you do every day, but just thinking about it differently. From a sales engineering standpoint, what would be a place to start? Uh, that's Joel asking that. I, again, Joel, I'm going to go right back to the tools that I mentioned off the top. Continuous integration tools, Jenkins, Strider, Travis CI on the development side, and configuration management tools, uh, Chef, Puppet, and Ansible on the ops side, and then cloud, 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 cloud. 
just everything about the cloud makes all of this easier because it provides a static framework underneath what you're doing to handle the deployment of all of this 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 DevOps work. So you're you suddenly you've got a uh, you've got a platform in the cloud where you can roll out your your DevOps updates to, and you can uh, you can see your code roll out from right from development through testing, unit testing, user acceptance testing, all the way to production deployment. Uh, that's the thing that I would focus on the most there, I think, from sales engineering. And all of this, guys, all the answers to these questions are, of course, going to be dependent on your organization, your job, what you're doing in your, your, current, your current work, and what does and does not apply to what you need to do. So uh, what's good for the goose isn't always good for the gander. And think about, and again, this gets back to that critical thinking point I made, think about how these things apply to what you do and what you need to do, and don't chase down a path or chase down a technology just because it's popular and it's hot and you heard that DevOps professionals are using it. Chase it down because it has the features that you want to use to improve the life cycle of your delivery at your organization. All right, are there, uh, are there any other questions? We've got a few more minutes here. Okay, it's looking pretty quiet. So again, I think that DevOps is really, really cool. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, I do think that it's a bit of a buzzword, like I said at the beginning. But you know what? That's okay, because that just means that people are excited about it and that it's interesting and that it's got people engaged. And, uh, you know, we should be engaged in it as well. We should be excited to learn about it. There's some great training available here at CBT Nuggets. I will, uh, you know, toot our own horn a little bit. You can watch Sean Power's incredible series on Chef and Puppet right here at CBT Nuggets. You can watch... Uh, Jeremy's AWS series on Amazon Web Services for Cloud. Garth and myself have series on Google Cloud Platform and Microsoft Azure. So there's really great stuff to learn, and there's, there's great information out there all over the place. Check out the DevOps sessions when you're at a conference. Look for that word in the keynotes. You know, you want to talk to the or hear the people that are involved in it on a daily basis talking about it. Uh, and just get up to date, get up to speed on the sort of new way that people are, are doing this on a daily basis.